Hello y'all and welcome to Young Folk Knits. Today I want to chat a little bit about a fall trend I am seeing everywhere and that is texture. So stick around and let's take a look at how knitwear designers are using it this season. Hello y'all and welcome back to Young Folk Knits. My name is Casey and on this channel I mainly like to share all about my love for fiber arts. So there's lots of knitting, sometimes crochet, sewing, spinning, who knows what we might get up to around here. I also like to share a little bit about living on a small farm in Arkansas where my husband and myself and our children are beekeepers. We love raising chickens and gardens and animals and spending time outdoors here in the foothills of the Ozark. So sometimes I share a little glimpse of that as well. And if any of that sounds like your cup of tea, then make sure and hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on any new video content. Today, however, I really want to look at something I'm seeing everywhere in knitwear this fall, and that is texture. So when I say texture, what I really mean is anything that gives your fabric something interesting to look at that isn't really cables. Cables is texture, and lace, that definitely qualifies as texture. But I'm sort of separating those things out of this subgroup. And what I mainly mean is an elevated stockinette fabric that is using a mixture of knit and purl stitches to give your fabric dimension and interest and, you know, make it bumpy. I don't know. But it's something I'm seeing a lot and something I absolutely love in fall knitwear. Also, y'all forgive me, I'm a little bit congested. Speaking of fall, the ragweed's definitely trying to kill me at the moment. So what I've done is gone through and picked out some of my favorite patterns of the moment that are featuring texture. I included some garments and accessories and I also made a bundle on Ravelry, which I have linked in the description. So after you watch this video, make sure and click on that bundle and you can see even more examples of some patterns I've added that I wasn't really able to fit into today's video. So the thing I'm loving about texture is that you can take some really simple design elements and elevate it to make it immediately more interesting just by using those knit and purl combinations. One example of this I'm seeing a lot right now is what I'm gonna call sort of linear paneled texture. <laughs> so I think, you know, we saw this originally in different things like the Gansey sweater, Petite Knit put out the Ingrid sweater, but now I'm seeing it from a lot of different designers like Sari Nordland. She has a few designs that are not yet released, but they will be very soon. In fact, one of them I think will be released by the time this video is live. She had mentioned early October, but it is the Colette pullover. And in it, you can see an example of the linear texture. Now she does have cables in this one. One of those patterns, which should be available before too long, she is still working on the pattern, but it is called the Oliver pullover. So you can see lots of different panels where it has differing texture looks like it's mainly being created with knits and pearls not cables or lace and we saw that again with the petite knit storm sweater which is really popular right now but there are a few patterns that are available now in this vein of what i like to call linear textured patterns <music> And one of them is a pattern by Other Loops, and it is called the Soft Loop Sweater. I love how this looks knit up in this creamy color, but I honestly think it would look so good in any color because while it has the texture, the texture is not overpowering. It doesn't take away from the color or the sweater itself. 
it just adds a lot of visual interest. So this pattern is knit with light fingering and lace held together with a 20 stitch gauge. Unfortunately, there's only three sizes available with a bust circumference of 120 centimeters, 130 centimeters, and 144 centimeters. So there is, that could cover, you know, quite a bit depending on what you chose for your ease, but I do wish it came in more sizes. Another option in this sort of linear paneled texture is the sweater number 18 which is a pattern by My Favorite Things Knitwear. Now this is an Aran weight gauge. So you've got 16 stitches in your four inches or 10 centimeters, which means it's gonna knit up really quickly. Especially the fact that you're basically just doing knits and purls, it's gonna go fast. But I love how this pattern has some really interesting shoulder detail. I think that the little things like that, the folded collar, the fact that you're alternating a little bit of faux rib, it looks like some twisted stitches along with some garter. It's very simple, but again, it's giving you depth and visual interest. Now, a pattern I absolutely love, but it does have some lace in it. That's okay, we're gonna throw it in here anyway. And that is called the Salty Day Sweater. So this is a pattern by Veronica Lindbergh. If you watch knitting YouTube, then you probably watch her YouTube channel. Uh, Kuta Vakika, I think is how you say it. That's probably wrong. But this sweater is like next level panels. <laughs> it's almost like every panel's a little bit different. You've got some really fun textures in this one. In fact, the texture is not subtle in this one. The other ones, I would say you've got some very subtle details. This one, texture, you know, hits you right in the face, which I love, absolutely love it. Another thing I love about this sweater is that it comes in size extra small through 5XL. So there's a pretty good size range here. And you're using a lace with a DK or a 17 stitch gauge. So you could do a DK, you could do a DK in lace, you could do a worsted with that. You've got a lot of different options with this one. And I really love how she shows how good it looks with different colors. But I think that if you really want the textured pattern to show and stand out in this particular sweater, I think it's important to do a lighter color. Now, I don't mean it has to just be white, but I think really any color family, as long as it's a lighter version of it, is going to show up the details more. When you start getting into really dark colors with this sort of pattern, you're gonna hide a lot of the details for it, which is a shame when you go to all the work. But if you wanted to make it in a dark color, it's not gonna look bad. It's still gonna look good. You just might miss a few of those details from afar. The next texture that I am absolutely loving forever and for always. Loving you forever and for always. Forever and for always. Twain forever and for always and that is brioche ribbing or half fisherman's rib really any of those they all look very similar and they all provide a fabulous texture so definitely see this in pullovers in hats in cardigans but the first one I want to share is the pan cardigan by sorry Nordland in case you can't tell, I'm a huge Sorry fan. Okay, I don't know what's going on. My iPad's not working. I'm gonna switch to my phone here. The pan cardigan is an absolutely beautiful brioche cardigan that has pockets. Love the pockets. I love the v-neck shaping. I find v-neck cardigans to be much more versatile for me personally. And I also find that a v-neck on most garments tends to be a little bit more flattering on my face and my face shape. Now that's gonna be different for everybody. But for me, a V-neck, a sweetheart neckline, anything like that tends to be a little bit more, I tend to like the look of it a little bit more on myself. This pattern calls for a DK weight and you can either do a fingering and lace or just a single DK by itself. 
and you've got a 16 stitch gauge in this brioche pattern. So I love the fact that it's cropped. It's got a boxy fit. I, phone wasn't working, but my iPad keeps disconnecting. It just keeps saying it's not connected. It'll work for a minute and then it'll stop. Thank you. Okay, so is the most beautiful, wonderful woman. In you are so world. funny. She's my North Star, my, <laughs> my moon, my galaxy. I'm gonna put this in the podcast. Just my husband knows I'm about to start my period. <laughs> she is unbelievably talented beautiful and just my you do know that the microphone's being. over here <laughs> oh my goodness what did he do who knows okay so another cardigan which is very similar to that one but would definitely be warmer is the vivica or vivica cardigan by my favorite things knitwear this one is knit in a bulky weight, so if you feel like you get a little bit bogged down in the brioche or um, half fisherman's rib, then your bulky weight's gonna definitely go a lot faster. You're knitting this on US 10s, so you can imagine. This also has the pockets and it has a double knit button band. So very similar here, but very cozy, very cozy vibes. And I definitely, and I'm loving that texture. So a pattern I think is really interesting is this same brioche or half fisherman's rib. You can see this same ribbing detail. Um, this is a modified rib stitch, but it is knit in an Aran weight. So there is a 10 stitch gauge to this which wow that's going to knit up really quickly um, you're knitting this on us 15s i love seeing this in a big chunky cozy pullover design so you can really see that boxy silhouette it has a saddle shoulder it's got a little bit of a puff sleeve um, has that nice long cuff which also creates some visual interest and the vertical stitch design i think is always very flattering it's a little bit cropped, but it's still super cozy and timeless. Again, just that little bit of texture from ribbing is giving your fabric some depth, some interest. That texture is just yummy. So I love this. It comes in eight sizes, a pattern by Olan Handmade. So definitely check out the Colette sweater. I think that you could play around with the collar to make it a little bit more fall friendly. I know for me, fall is definitely not cold yet here where we live in the South. It's just not cold. So a big chunky turtleneck or a high neck may not be the most reasonable thing for fall weather. Um, but just even by folding that collar down, you're creating a little bit more airflow around your neck and upper chest and that immediately makes it more fall wearable for me. Before we get into the next few patterns I'm really loving, I want to take a minute to give a thanks to the sponsor for today's video. I was really excited when Hey Happiness reached out and asked if I wanted to try some of their jewelry. I am not a big jewelry person, as in I don't wear a lot of it, but I do love to wear a few quality pieces. And Hey Happiness is definitely a quality jewelry company. The reason that they are named Hey Happiness is because they want to bring a little bit of happiness to everyone's life. And when you wear a beautiful piece of jewelry, it can definitely put a smile on your face. <laughs> hey Happiness is heavily tested to make sure that it is free of lead, nickel, cadmium, and materials like this which is very important to me because as I've mentioned before, I have extremely sensitive skin and any jewelry with nickel especially will cause me to have an almost immediate reaction. So I love the fact that I can trust that this jewelry is going to be safe for my skin. Instead, they really focus on using some beautiful materials like gold and stainless steel, which my skin much prefers. <laughs> 
I picked out a couple of different pieces of jewelry. The first one are these gorgeous chunky hoop earrings in gold. These are 18 karat gold plated with a stainless steel center and those materials are so much better for my skin. I love how gold just seems to go with everything and definitely works well with my skin tone. I really like how these open and close. They feel very secure. They sort of clip into place so I know that they're not going anywhere and I like that they're not too heavy. They don't feel like they're pulling on my ear. Other item I chose was the delicate layering bracelet set. These are all 18 karat gold plating with a sterling silver center. I love how beautiful and delicate these are. I think they're absolutely stunning and I think that they will go with anything. They also have an adjustable clip so that you can make the length perfect for you. I just love that dangle. Hey Happiness has provided a code for all of you to use and it is valid October 5th when this video goes live through November 5th, 2023. So all you have to do is type in Young Folk Knit into the discount code bar and you will receive 10% off your order of 29 euros or higher. So thank you to Hey Happiness for sponsoring today's video. Back to the knits. Another example of this rib style fabric is the Grass Whispers Beanie. This is a pattern by Teti Lutzak. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly but I absolutely love this. I love that it's in a worsted weight gauge. It just has this delicious thick texture to it that looks so squishy. I'm not huge on my hat getting too crazy. If I'm gonna do that, I'll usually do it more with color than with the pattern. I don't like a lot of lace or you know crazy cables. I, I love cables, but I like my hat to be a little bit calmer and I love how this ribbing is able to do that but still add some interest and I'm a huge fan of the color that she used. It's one of my favorite colors in the world and I just think it makes any pattern look better. <laughs> she used John Arbin Textiles Harvest Hues Worsted. I haven't used that yarn yet but it does look very nice. I wonder if it's itchy may have to look into that a little bit. It does have a little bit of cables, but the slip stitch ribbing is just extra squishy and beautiful. I like that it comes with four different sizes. So again, you can make it for yourself. You can make it for your kids. Since we're talking about fall, I think that, you know, again, I definitely need some pieces that aren't too heavy and too hot. So I wanna share a few different layering pieces. First one is still in that ribbed texture and it is the Darling Wrap. So this is such a great pattern by Pernille Larson of Knitting for Olive. And this has extra small through 4XL. It's got lots of different languages and they use light fingering and lace held together. So it's not gonna be too thick. Definitely a little bit more of a lighter pattern. I love how it has the waist tie. It definitely gives that ballerina vibe to it. And I think it would be so beautiful worn over dresses. In fact, that's what I would love to wear it with. That deep V that you get from the wrap, I think is really flattering. And again, a really nice button band, even though there's no buttons, I don't know, collar, button band, that, that area, I think is a really beautiful aspect of this pattern. So the next layering piece I really like, and that is a vest called Cameo, which is published in Alana Magazine, issue 16. So this is by Orlaine Suchet, but it's absolutely beautiful. And it calls for a DK weight yarn. I love that it is a vest because again, for me, that's very important in the fall months to be able to have a little bit of a lighter layer, still provide some warmth, but not overheat. And I love how you can wear it over dresses, over shirts, with jeans. It's just so beautiful. You can wear it buttoned up and get more of that sweater vest look, or you can wear it unbuttoned and have more of a sort of cardigan vest situation. 
So this pattern was knit up in Harrisville Designs Daylight, which I think is a really interesting and pretty yarn. You get a lot of texture from the yarn itself, and it has some beautiful different speckles of colors in it from being plied with little bits of colored yarn along with it. It's a little tweed. I don't know if I would call it tweedy, but it has some really interesting color combinations in the in the space. If you're not really into vests, I still think that a short sleeve can be layered really nicely over long sleeves even in the fall. And I think a pattern that could look really cute that way is the Velocore, which is by Andrea Mowry. So this uses a light fingering weight in two different colors, and you're getting this amazing texture from mosaic knitting and slipped stitches. Uh, I think it's got some really beautiful details. I loved the cropped boxy fit. Of course, with the Andrea Mowry patterns, you're usually going to get a great size range. So I think that's wonderful as well. And I love seeing how it looks good on so many different body types if you check out the projects on Ravelry. I think this would be really fun in some lower contrast colors. So maybe same color family, but a darker and a lighter. Another one you can get that with is the Friday Slipover V-neck. This is a pattern by Petite Knit, and I think that the texture in it just is absolutely beautiful. I actually think I might knit this in a single color. I have some yarn for this that I am wanting to hold a fingering weight and a lace surrey alpaca that I have together, and I think I'll just knit it all in one color. I love the the texture that you get on the body and then the plain v-neck ribbing sort of grounds everything back together and I think that this would go so nicely with you know black jeans a button-up shirt or with a skirt and a no positive ease turtleneck underneath it I just think there's so many cute ways to wear this outfit so this one is definitely on my list and I do have some yarn I want to make with it. One more pattern I want to share is a free pattern. And it is called the March Hat by Megan Babin. So this is a worsted weight hat. The sample is knit with Kelburn Woolens, but I just think it's such a fun texture. I love the big deep ribbing and you can definitely add a palm for even more texture on top but how great is it that it's free and it comes with multiple sizes so this hat pattern is just a treasure it's always in the hot right now on Ravelry and it was released back in 2019 and it's you know it's just been a staple ever since then I think there's about 2,500 projects on Ravelry <laughs> from this hat so that should tell you something right there. The last group I wanna share is some pullovers that I've really been seeing with a little bit of barely there texture. So I love that texture that almost looks like a waffle Henley top sweater. I think those are so fun, I love that. And I've seen that in quite a few patterns. One of them that is my absolute favorite is the Velvety Oversized Sweater by Gregoria Fibers. I absolutely love this sweater. It is a worsted weight gauge. You can hold multiple yarns together, but you get that sort of waffly fabric. And I think it's mainly just a broken rib, but it's so beautiful. It looks like you're on your way to go camping. And I think that's similar to a couple of sweaters by Sophie from The Knit Pearl Girl, like the Valley sweater. Again, I love it. There's that barely there texture, but it's enough to make it very interesting. It gives a lot of depth. And this is knit with a super bulky weight gauge. So that one's gonna knit up really quickly. She also has the Aosta sweater 3.0 version which is a bulky weight gauge as well, but I really like how the sleeves have a little bit of bell, a little bit of puff to them. I think it's really pretty. I like how you start this pattern out with the collar. You knit the collar first and then you go down. I always seem to be able to customize my fit a little bit better. 
she has she has quite a few different examples of of this type of sweater i hope that you found a textured pattern that you love or if you're like me you just added a whole nother list of projects to your queue you may or may not get to <laughs> just what i need a longer knitting queue there are so many more patterns i wanted to talk about but unfortunately time will not allow so i'm going to share a few of these for another video with another fall trend that i really love if you enjoy videos like this, make sure and give it a thumbs up and also click that subscribe button so that you won't miss out on any new video content. It definitely helps my channel out so much when you do that and I appreciate each and every one of you. Until next time, happy knitting y'all.